Bak şu resme. Elime fırçayı aldım. Gözümü kapattım. Rastgele böyle sağa sola savurdum. Ve sanatlı bir eser ortaya çıktı. Yani bu kainatın oluşmasında bir yaratıcıya ihtiyaç yok. Her şey tesadüfen oluşabilir. Ben bu resmi senin yaptığına inanmıyorum. Ben yaptım oğlum. Bak fırça benim elimde işte. Bence bu resmi fırça yaptı. Ya bırak saçmalamayı. Sen soruma cevap ver. Bana bu resmi fırçanı yapmadığını ispat et. Ben de sorunu cevaplayayım. Bak kardeşim. Bu fırça cansız. Nasıl bir sanat eseri ortaya çıkarabilir ki? Ah, hadi yapsın. Gördün mü? Fırçaya bu işi yaptırabilecek akıl, irade, güç sahibi birinin olması. Descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God, from God, from God, from God. based on scientific knowledge in the 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God, from God, from God, from God. The first commandment in the Bible in Exodus is the same as the first commandment in the book of Deuteronomy. Thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. That's the first commandment for us as well. The second commandment you have clearly says thou shalt now make any idol, any graven image of anything that creeps upon the earth, swims in the sea beneath, or flies in the air above. Mark 12:29. The greatest commandment is to know, O Israel, the Lord your God is. You show it to me. Jesus says, I'm God. But he says, worship me. I'm prepared to get baptized tonight. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28, he said, My father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, My father is greater than all. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the Jewish scriptures. It's mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number eighteen, verse number eighteen. It says, "Almighty God says, I shall raise them for prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall speak all that I command him." So the Christians they say that this prophecy refers to no one but Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. They tell us that Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them, both of them were prophets of God, and both of them were Jew. That's why this prophecy is talking about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If these two are the only criteria, if these two are the only criteria for the fulfillment of the prophecy, that he should be a Jew and he should be a prophet of God, then all the prophets mentioned in the Bible after Moses, peace be upon him, fulfilled this prophecy. For example, Prophet Solomon, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, Hosea, all of them were prophets of God and all of them were Jew. If we analyze, we come to know that this prophecy befits no one better than the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like unto Moses, peace be upon him. If we analyze, Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them were born naturally. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not born naturally. He was born without any male intervention. And this is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 45 to 47. And is also mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 1, verse number 18. And the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 1, verse number 35, that he was born without any male intervention. He was born miraculously. Further, if we analyze Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Moses, peace be upon them, both of them were married and they had children. But according to the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not married, and he had no children. It's further mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, 
verse number 12. It says that the book shall be given to him who is not learned. The book shall be given to a prophet who is not learned. We know Prophet Muhammad was unlettered. He was an ummi. <laughs>
The other Hadith, she's older. The mother's taken to the father. The father's often her in marriage. And look what it said in the Quran in chapter 4, verse 19. She has to be old enough to know what's going on and understand it and old enough to have children. Yeah, otherwise, she can't get married. It's not a legal marriage in Islam. It gives us the example that even though she was betrothed at an early age, they didn't get married until she was old enough. The man standing there going, I So Islam in short means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many people of misconception, fact, and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, is the founder of this religion. In fact, Islam is there since time immemorial. It's mentioned in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 40. I do agree with the uh, non-Muslim sister that unfortunately many Muslims call different names. But when I tell the Hindus to go back to the Vedas, I tell the Muslims to go back to the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 103, Allah says, Wa taseemu bi hablillahi jami wa tafarraku. Hold the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. We have to hold the rope of Allah. The rope of Allah is the glorious Quran and the authentic hadith. Making sex, making division in Islam is prohibited. It is haram. See, all these four great imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Malik, that if you find any of my fatwa which goes against Allah and his Rasul, then you throw my fatwa on the wall.